Hey, yo, Mr. Breakdown, what you doing? Breaking down a strategic plan to help the Lakers franchise. Help them in what way? Well, the Lakers were in frequent contact with Phil Jackson because of everything going on. Hmm. Remember he had Shaq and Kobe dealing with their ego? We were both you know, dominant personalities. Both alpha males. You put two alpha males in a room, you're going to go at it. 96 through 99 was a frustrating point. I don't know about, well, maybe, maybe a little bit for you, but for me, being one of the best bigs in the league and having that title of not winning one, mm -hmm. I think it took toll on both of us, you know? I wanted to get it, you wanted to get it. Well, I'm at a, a point in my life where individual islands don't mean much anymore. I'm just, you know, uh, more worried about what the team is capable of doing. Uh, I admit I was, I was probably crazy. Well, I, we, we both weren't necessarily yeah, stable. Yeah, I mean, I, so what you're saying is if you could have gotten to them during that point, you could have helped them become stable? Yes, sir, because they need somebody to decipher what's said amongst the players on the inside and filter what's said on the outside from other people, TV, media, etc. Because I had you, I was able to just chill out on the summer. Do what yeah, I do. Yeah, see, that's what, yeah. Drove, that's what pissed me off. <laughs> yeah, that, that was it right hey, there. Man. That, that was Oh, I get it. Like a vehicle that has a check engine light. Like you don't deal with that check engine light when it comes on, you're going to have major problems down the road. Listen, I got beat up. I got <laughs> hack and shack. I was tired, man. <laughs> I ain't doing no work. I'm going home. I'm swimming. Me and Uncle Jerome, we're sipping pina coladas. we eating burgers. My ass is <laughs> in the gym 10 hours got, a day. <laughs> one thing I know I got, I got a kid that's going to give me 40 when yeah. he wants to. So. Yeah. Yo, what about Brody? Russell Westbrook. But I said this, uh, and we were on here maybe about a month ago, and I said that Russell Westbrook is broken. And I'm not talking about his jump shot. Yes, we can go down the line and say how he should play better, but I, I could see it. I could see it in his body language. And now we finally are realizing that Russell Westbrook is human. And if you watch this film right here, look, he's not even involved. Like, mentally, he's not even there. He didn't even move that entire possession at all. Yes, sir, that's what a high performance life coach can do for you. Things and push different things. And then when you got in shape, it was hard then to try to feel to try to dial that back. Right. Right? Because I might be going 40, 45, 50, you know, such stuff. It feels like, okay, we gotta rein you back in now. Rein me back in for what? No, no, I'm not getting reined back in. No. I remember watching crazy Jim Gray. And Jim oh, yeah. Gray, yeah, Kobe said. Why should he have to, yeah. right? So, that was you know, one. Yeah. I was mad. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't drive to practice fast enough. Now, that, this was me at my craziest. This is, this is what I'm thinking. I'm going to drive to practice. We're going to fight. It's going to be awesome. Right. May get beat to a pulp, but God, you know what? It's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. And that's what I came to practice, yeah. completely expecting that to happen. And I think, I think B. Shaw might have. Calm, yeah. calm yeah. everybody down. Yeah. <laughs> he was waiting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he yeah. was waiting. No, the funny thing is, I saw the article the night before. Uncle Jerome usually meets me at the house so we can ride together. So he wasn't there. So I wanted to beat him anyway. So I left the house at eight. As soon as I get to the radio, he was like, I knew, I knew the fire that I lit. I knew what I said. And he knew what he said. You knew what you said. And he said, okay, this is it. It's coming to a head. We're going to go in here. We're going to be grown men about it. We're going to fight it out. And then what comes out of it comes out of it. And that's just, just is what it is at that point. You could have prevented that. I would have reconciled it to a head coach can only do so much. Create a super team, Gary Call. We make it back to the finals. Between the circles, snaps a pass to Rip. He'll step up, baseline left. Oh! The Pistons smash the Lakers in five. For homes, right. we're actually looking for homes in Chicago, researching schools, um, places to live. So that was true. You were going to go to the Bulls. Yeah, there was a story in ESPN. I think it was ESPN magazine, and it asked you a question about me and Penny. And you said that we're essentially the same. And I looked at that. I said, uh, "No, we're not." But I think you took that the wrong way because of all the. All the misquotes and all the bad stuff. I probably did. And I probably it probably used his motivation too. Yeah. Saying, listen, if if this is the conversation, I don't want this conversation. 
When I retire, I don't want people to say, okay, he only won because of Shaq. As unfair as that is, Magic never won without Cap, right? Michael never won without Scotty. So, but here I am getting stuck with this argument, which is not fair, but yet this is the argument people will make, and I'm not okay with that. And so therefore I knew, okay, I gotta, I gotta go. Could Loki's effect turn this Lakers season around? Most definitely. Never forgotten legend. What you know what I love about the great Dr. Jerry Buss? He called me and said, hey, you're aging. Of course, I know you want the money, but I can't lose this guy. I'm going to start all over. It's certainly a disappointing day in a lot of ways in Los Angeles. I mean, to say anything else, you know, would not be telling the truth. We're, we're looking for places in Chicago, man. We're, we're flying up there to meet with you Ryan's door. You want to leave sunny California to go to cold at Chicago. I mean, that's the signed off. We're moving out to, uh, I think it was Lake Forest, I think it was, Chicago. And uh, we're on a vacation to Italy. I got a phone call, Rob Palenka called me. And he said, Shaq just requested a trade. I was like, well, there goes Chicago. There's, there's no way the Lakers are gonna <laughs> lose me and Shaq in the same year. Which After Shaq left, they got rid of Phil Jackson. They missed the playoffs in 05. And then in 06 and 07, they brought Phil Jackson back. And they actually lost in the first round of the playoffs twice to Phoenix. Man. I don't want to see another sequence of events like that. But what if you got to go through Braun? Just give me 30 minutes with Braun. That's all I need. That's about people. They loved us so much. They love to keep our beef going. Yeah. They loved it. Yeah. Imagine how many championships they would have won together if they would have never broken down. We're going to reunite the two of you back together again on Valentine's Day. All right. Hey, what's up, young boy? What's up, man? Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Hey, hey, hey. Felt good to play with you again. It did. I had flashbacks. Felt great. It was, the game was real easy. And we read each other very easily. And um, yeah, it was uh, it was fun to kind of you know go back to memory lane. You believe him when he says it was all media ploy by him to grab attention and take pressure off of you? Big chief marketer? Yeah, you should say that all the time. <laughs> you should say that all the time. Kobe Bryant, Shaquille O'Neal, co-MVPs of All-Star 2009. <laughs> but do you remember what you did during that game that made me realize I was with you all these years? No. You don't remember? Mm -mm. So we got the co-MVP. It's me, mm -hmm. Sharif, and you standing on stage. And what did you tell me to do? You told me to take the trophy home. That's right. Remember that? I did. And I took it home and I gave it to Sharif. Yeah. And I, and I realized now, I was like, I think I may have messed something up. Because a lot of times that our beef was going on, you know me, I'm the master marketer. Mm -hmm. About 60% of the time, I would just say it just to keep it going. But like when you did that, when you didn't have to do that, because you know, usually they take it and they mail it. But right. you're like Shaq, and you know, you, and you know Sharif loves you. Uh, so you know, so he goes Sharif and you gave him a trophy. I, I, you know, I just said to myself, and I was like, Luckily, I won three out of four <laughs> with this guy, but I was a <laughs> to this guy. So I, I owe you an apology. I'm going to give you an apology, but we ain't going to be doing all that crying. No. And all that <laughs> there. But thank you for that moment because uh, like Sharif loved that moment. That was the first time I was able you know, to give him something. He was there. I was going through a lot at that time. And, you know, he loved you for it. I love you for that moment. Yeah, so thank you for that moment. Thank you. Bruh, how many jerseys you got anyway? <laughs> Don't worry about it. I got enough. Mr. Encouragement.